the Immortal Thor issue number five. That's right, folks. It's the Thor Core Hour. They got some stuff to do. I guess it's only like the Thor Core Minute because they have 60 seconds to enact their plan. But you know what I mean. Thor Core time, everybody. We have Thor. We have Storm. We have Beta Ray Bill. We have Jane Foster and Loki to round out our favorite team of little creepy people. It's great. It's fun. This book's really weird, and I like it so much. Like, it seems like exactly the kind of thing that's been happening a lot with Thor when we take, like, big swings. We make it more, like, mythological and just, like, intense and deep and prolific and scary. I love it so much. So, this book opened up with the Utgard Thor, who was Tyrannos, right? He was, like, the god of gods. Well, my dear friends and my dear listeners... This book tells us about the Demurge, the Demiurge, the Demiurge. It's spelt Demiurge, and they're the gods of the gods of the gods. <laughs> so there's like the Thor and Odin level gods, and there's like the gods of existence like Gaia and the Utgard Thor and Utgard Loki. And they're created by the Demiurge, which is the god of them. It's like a big thing of existence. It saw what the earth was going to be and sprung forth it, the beings that would shape life, including Tyrannos and including Gaia. And they're the two first beings, and then they fight. They wage a war, these two siblings, of life and death. They have their wheels that they spin to change the times and change the seasons. And Gaia's like, I have a plan to bring down my brother, and it's going to enact now, so I will start my plan today. Because she creates a son capable of destroying her brother because Gaia is still technically the mother of Thor if you remember that from the previous Avengers run cool so the Thor core was Gaia's plan to take down you know Tyrannos and I'm like yeah sure I, I mean yeah why not so they they get some good licks in here trying to def defeat the guy you know they're all passing around, Mjolnir charging it up, unleashing a bolt so strong that it can take down Tyrannos. And it, it gets like a good attack on him and it hurts him and it cracks into his armor. And you're like, he's being wounded. He's being defeated. We can do this. Our time is limited, but we can hurt this god. But then Loki gets a hold of Mjolnir and they're like, this feels kind of good. I remember holding this. I do like it. Have at thee, evil being. And then you just see Vader Bill's like, no, what are you doing, Loki? But it's too late. The arrogance of Loki is their demise. And Tyrannos catches Mjolnir and it's like, uh, well, what do we do now? And he's like, ah, the power's mine. I hold the thunders and the winds and the storms. All of it is mine. I am bestowed upon it. And everyone starts losing their Thor powers. And you just see Thor's like, it's exactly what I wanted. So Tyrannos, I judge you worthy of the power, Thor. And he's like, what? And suddenly Tyrannos emerges with his own, like, Thor sized armor and he's got like Mjolnir the sized for him and Thor's like ah can you answer this one quick question for me Utgard God what is the power of Thor and it's like what are you talking about what have you done to me the greatest power of Thor is to learn knowledge and learn from its humility to know to be Thor is to be worthy and know you are worthy to know that you can sometimes be not worthy for your humility and you just see Toronto's like no, no, what, what is, no, 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 this sucks, no, I don't want this, take this off of me, you disgust me, he's like, no, what you have seen cannot be unseen, your heart and mind have been opened, you are trapped with this burden of being Thor, he's like, I hate you Thor, I hate you, ah, just screaming at the top of his lungs, you've cursed me, the command of my brother, you loser, and I will be the first to destroy your mother Gaia, and that alerts Thor, like, oh shit, you know my mom, what do you mean by that, what is that? Talk to me, Utgard Thor, and he just vanishes because Thor defeated him with the power of being Thor because being Thor is intense and it's insane and nobody should want to be Thor and it ruins your life and you learn humility, but you have the knowledge of your own humility. And I'm like, that's that's pretty fun. I mean, that's like a cool old like storytelling demise where it's like you seek the ultimate power, but when you get the ultimate power, it destroys you. That's so old school. That's mythology. 101 baby so i love that they managed to win the day thor's kind of defeated storm's like that worked pretty well good job man i don't know why you needed me to do it but thor's like well i needed somebody i could trust with the power of thor that wouldn't be corrupted by its influences or has like the worthy heart regardless of actually 
bestowing the power upon them. So thank you for your help, Aurora. I apologize. If you need me to come to Araka with you, I will fight along your side against your battle. She's like, it's fine. I just need to make an entrance and my people will fall in line again. But, you know, it would be nice to wear a cape. So she takes Thor's cape and she heads off to war. I like that. It's pretty fun. And then it's just kind of Thor saying like, hey, good job, everybody. And Beta Ray Bill, my, my brother, I, I know we have not been on the greatest of terms and agree with me that we are not where we used to be. And he's like, you know what? Those were dark days, but we are on the path of healing and that is all we can ask for. So goodbye. Perhaps next time I can use the Twilight Sword. Okay. Beta Ray Bill's dealt with. So we then go to Jane Foster who wants to talk to Thor and she's like, I traveled from Valhalla. I actually spoke to your father. Which, if you are reading Al Ewing's other book, The Avengers, Inc., this is the third issue of that, where, like, Janet Van Dyne and, and Victor Creed go into Valhalla because somebody escaped Valhalla. That book's not doing too good, and it's going to end soon, which kind of sucks. But whatever, and she's like, look, your father came with a warning, and, and he's been having, like, these visions that whoever wields the hammer is going to meet their end. And Thor's like, so I won't let anybody else wield it. Okay, fair enough. And she's like, well, it's not that easy, you know. You might think your father summoned me to come keep an eye on you and, like, do, like, his bidding in the mortal realm, but it wasn't me. He actually brought somebody else to do his dirty work for him. The Executioner is back. And then we cut to Scourge in the Roxxon Tower talking to Dario because we saw earlier that the Minotaur has bought all of the rights to the Marvel characters. He owns Marvel Comics now in-universe for Marvel, which is kind of silly. And Scourge is like, look, I'm with a guy, I'm working for like a guy I won't name, and he's kind of like wanting to buy Thor's rights back so we can change the story. Would that be okay? You know, would that work well? Do you think we could do that? You know? Hmm? And you're like, oh. <sighs> do you think it's, you think like he's uh, working for Odin? Like it's Odin who wants to take like Thor's story and control? And he's like, no, it's not Thor's. And it's like, oh. This must be your friend because the person who's coming in for Scourge that wants to buy Thor's rights is now in the building. And you're like, oh, so it must be Odin. Like, no, it's not Odin that wants the rights. It's Enchantress. And you're like, yes, finally, Scourge and Enchantress back together. It's been far too long, dear reader. It's been far too long. <laughs> That's a fun way to end the book. Like, yeah, I love Enchantress. She is such a fun character. And to do something like this with her is very necessary and needed. I think it's great. I'm very impressed with that. So what is what is Enchantress want of Thor's rights? She's going to change the lore so they're together, probably? That's kind of fun. Look, we wrap up the Tyranno stuff pretty well. He learns he doesn't want to become Thor. That's pretty interesting. The artwork is still spectacular. The writing is still spectacular. It's a good book. It's a strong Thor book, and I, I just like the way it's like dealt with it. Okay, thanks, everyone. What's the next issue? Oh, someone wants to buy my lore. <laughs> That's pretty fun. That is pretty fun. I'll say that. So, The Immortal Thor, issue number five. I am going to give an eight out of ten. Now, thank you all for watching this review. Be sure to like and subscribe to the channel. As always, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter. And, of course, I will catch you in the next one. Have fun. Stay safe. Good luck.